welcome to Indianomics. The markets and the country may be worried about the man heading RBI, but the man himself, I assume, is more worried about the economy and what should be the next policy step on June 7th when the monetary policy will be announced. So this week on Indianomics, we cover first a poll of the top bankers, economists and bond dealers in the country. And then my own monetary policy committee joins me to decode the events since the last policy and what to look forward to on June 7th. I will be joined by Anant Narayan of Standard Chartered Bank, Jahangir Aziz of JP Morgan and Ashish Parsarthi of HDFC Bank right away. And thereafter more bankers are joining us. But first, here's the poll prepared by my colleague Ritu Singh. The monetary policy stance remains accommodative. Going forward, we will be looking for further monetary room in signs of good monsoon, further readings of low headline inflation, indications of softening in core inflation, and further evidence of transmission of rate cuts. Since the rains are yet to arrive and banks yet to transmit cuts, Governor Rajan will mostly not cut any rates on the 7th of June. That was the finding of a CNBC TV18 poll across the country's top economists. The key repo, cash reserve ratio and statutory liquidity ratio rates all will remain unchanged in this policy, said every one of the respondents. However, this will not be the end of the rate cut cycle. All the respondents to CNBC TV18's poll say RBI will remain in an accommodative stance. A good 67% expect just one more quarter percentage cut before the year is out, while 20% expect no cuts at all this year. 13% are expecting a 50 basis point cut in the remaining part of this calendar year. The governor's tone will be as keenly watched as always. Does he worry so much about rising crude and food prices that he will up the inflation forecast for next year? 87% said no but 13% thought he could up his inflation forecast. On GDP growth, almost half the respondents expect the RBI to up its forecast from the current 7.6%, encouraged by the recent strong show in the macro data. The other focus point in this policy will be any further directives from the central bank on the rising bad loans. If he decides to give them a breather, even a no-cut policy can bring the market sufficient cheer. Well, thanks a lot for that, Ritu. And now, let me invite my guests, uh, Anant Narayan of Standard Chartered Bank, uh, Ashish Parsarthi of uh, HDFC Bank, and Jahangir Aziz of JP Morgan. Uh, gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for joining me. Well, first up, the previous policy, the April policy, was more known for its liquidity policy. Anant, uh, what's your sense? Has the RBI walked the talk? Any more to watch out for? in the current policy, uh, upcoming policy on the liquidity issue? Yeah, absolutely, Lata. I think uh, RBI has indeed walked the talk and uh, has done a lot towards uh, implementing the new liquidity paradigm, which it announced the last policy. Specifically, it's blessed the market with 70,000 crores of OMOs, mm -hmm. clearly in a, in a bid to infuse in primary liquidity. And the liquidity optical shortfall that we saw hovering around 2 trillion rupees uh, you know, in, the, in the worst days of March mm. has come down a lot more to about 80,000 crores. Now, having said all of that, clearly there is still an issue. We still haven't reached the neutrality which the RBI has indicated. Of course, the governor did indicate that this would take time. It won't happen overnight. In fact, he gave a time frame of eight months or so. Mm. What we would like to see in this policy is maybe some more steps towards uh, achieving that neutrality, which we think is very critical. Uh, there are ways in which these can be done, including by giving some more relaxation on LCR, as mm. they did in February of uh, this year, mm. which would then remove the double counting of LCR and SLR, mm. ease the issues on liquidity, allow large-scale OMOs to go through, mm. and plus give some relief to the bankers in the upcoming FCNRB uh, repayment as well. Mm. So we will be looking for steps uh, not so much on the rate cut side. I don't think that's that's coming uh, up mm. as yet. Mm. But clearly, on the on the implementation of the new liquidity framework, we will be looking for steps on that. Okay. Well, uh, Arant has uh, set all the uh, points uh, on the table in terms of what the money markets will be looking at. Uh, so, uh, uh, Ashish, I wanted you to add to this. Uh, uh, to this, definitely, how that. Uh, 
25 to 30 billion of FCNRB, which was uh, uh, deposits, which were collected September 2013, will be rolled over or paid back will be an issue. Uh, as uh, Anand pointed out, uh, there is still, the banks are still going to the RBI window uh, to borrow uh, at the repo window, it is not zero borrowing. Uh, will those two things be very critical for you? Anything else? So, uh, firstly, uh, there needs to be some more clarity on what is liquidity neutrality. Is it zero borrowing from RPI? I don't think so because what I have heard in various statements mm -hmm. that the government cash balances will continue to be auction, uh, auction through the repo process. Mm -hmm. So, as long as government runs those cash balances, it's not going to be zero. Mm -hmm. How do you define uh, liquidity neutrality is? I don't think extremely clear. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, if we can get more clarity on that, I, I, it will be very helpful. That's mm -hmm. that's one part of it. FCNR, uh, at the systemic level, you know, RPI uh, doesn't uh, uh, see too much of an issue uh, because they have some Enough amount dollars. of forward purchases dollars, they have reserves, they are obviously letting some of the forward purchases mature, so they have increasing reserves, they will give out mm. some dollars from the reserves. But, you know, it's a large amount. Mm. So, you know, that could cause some amount of disruption uh, during that period. So, uh, what one would uh, like is I think an over management of that situation which is coming, you know, whichever way, both in terms of giving uh, comfort on the rupee liquidity as well as on the dollar liquidity. So, if you, I think the situation will need to be over managed so that mm -hmm. you don't create any distortion, disruptions when actually. But you know, the go governor actually has more time on FCNRB. There is a policy coming up in August as well. And the FCNRB deposits uh, were collected from September 2013 onwards. So they mature all the way up till November. He has more policies to uh, show his hand. Yes, yeah, definitely he has more policies. I think the bulk of the maturities will come in October and November. Mm. But uh, this will be more, less of a policy uh, issue. It will be more of a you know, process and how it gets managed. Fair point. Okay, let's uh, then postpone that to a, a later date. Uh, on uh, liquidity itself, I have an issue with you bankers. You know, the noise that was made before, in, up until the run-up to April and on Indianomics itself, is that because there is so much of a liquidity deficit, you know, 2 lakh crore plus, the monetary policy is not getting transmitted. I mean, what has happened after uh, the 70,000 crore of OMOs? All that we have seen is that the tenure has come down by 15 basis points. The spread between my bar and call, oh, what I mean is the shorter term rates were about, you know, the spread was 10 basis points. I think it's become like 6 basis points. I mean, why was the market complaining so much? There seems to be not that much of transmission in the money markets. So there are there are two aspects. One is rates and one is liquidity, right? Rates also there has been, if you see uh, during the last one month or so, you had occasions when the actual MIBOR has come below the policy rate okay. and now, so it's fluctuation in both sides rather than, you know, very sticky 10 to 15 basis points above the policy rate. So that's one change. Uh, secondly is, you know, rate can be maintained either way, whether mm -hmm. the system is surplus or deficit, either RBI can absorb. I don't uh, see so much of yield drop is what I'm saying. I mean, so okay. Uh, the so if, you see, if you see money market instruments, if you see CDs, if you see CPs, there has been a significant okay. drop in those okay. yields. Ten year is a long term thing. And until you see actual deposits grow, since mm -hmm. deposits growth in the banking system has been very anemic, mm -hmm. then obviously rates will not come down because you need to, you know, fund your advances and also let us not forget that the FCNR maturity is coming up, mm. which will need some banks to, you know, Keep shore it. up uh, rupee liquidity to replace those. Mm. So, I think there will be some amount of stickiness to fall in deposit mm. rates. And if that stickiness is there, obviously lending rates will take some time. Okay. But definitely the direction is, uh, I think, down. You've seen okay. MCLRs which have come down by, you know, at least uh, 15 basis point from the you know, earlier base rate. Okay. And you can see some more downward trend. In All there. right. For those of us who don't use these abbreviations much, MCLR is the marginal cost of liquidity. And uh, Ashish is saying that uh, 
some of those rates have come down. We no longer talk of base rate cuts. We talk of MCLR cuts. And Ashish's point is that deposit costs have not fallen so much. And therefore, uh, there has been 5, 10, 15 basis points fall in the lending rate for you and me, but not a whole lot, though one hopes uh, more will come. But Jahangir, now to the big question, uh, the big elephant that the Reserve Bank will always have to address, inflation. Uh, since April 1, trend is very clear that uh, we have seen higher uh, commodity prices generally and higher crude prices in particular, as well higher food prices in India. So, uh, do you expect any policy action at all? Uh, our poll says no, no action expected, but uh, uh, will there be any talk that you will concentrate on on the inflation front? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I would hope that, you know, um, in this policy review, uh, the RBI not only talks about uh, the inflation, f inflation outlook, uh, which the, it has to because it's now at least, you know, um, uh, you know, it, 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 it's an inflation targeting mm. um, central bank, whichever way you want to define it. Mm. But I'm also would be curious as to how they see the growth outlook. Mm. Um, in terms of the rate cut, I think it's very difficult to say that in June you will get a rate cut or a rate decision, uh, largely because you have two very large global events mm. uh, in the month of June and July. Mm. Uh, you have the um, you know Brexit issue uh, that could be a spoiler for international markets. Uh, if it goes one way, if you do get a Brexit. Uh, in addition to that, people are waiting to see whether or not uh, the, FL, the Fed actually raises rates in uh, June or July. So I would think that uh, doing something like that in the face of um, these uh, two big uncertainties, uh, I, think, I, think, I think no central bank would, uh, would want to do something like that okay. in the month of June. Mm -hmm. So even if the RBI does plan to uh, you know, uh, cut rates or uh, let me say rate action, mm. as you very uh, politely put it. Um, uh, I think they would wait at least past July, and therefore I think August becomes a live meeting uh, rather than uh, to, uh, you know next week's meeting. Okay. Well, actually, I want to uh, ask you all a little more about uh, the inflation trajectory of the Reserve Bank, but I have to take a break at this juncture. I'm coming back with more questions for my guests and hopefully more bankers.